Hello, everybody. This is Stephen Smotherman here from FullTimeFBA.com, and I am here with uh, Kim and Jeff. They are from Inventory Lab. We're going to be talking about how to use Inventory Lab to save time, make more money, and just make living life and selling stuff on Amazon so much easier. So it's good that you are here, and uh, I want to let everybody know that we're going to have a presentation at the beginning. At the very end, we're going to open up for some Q&A, and... Um, and we'll, we'll you know, try to answer as many questions as possible as, as the time allows. Uh, so you can always just uh, put some of your questions in the question area. We can kind of come back to those toward the end. If you have questions as, as things come up, you can do that. Uh, so be sure to stay tuned all the way till the end because we've got some fun stuff for you. So I'm going to uh, introduce Kim and Jeff and let them tell, them, tell a little bit about themselves. And uh, uh, Kim, Jeff, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having us. I'm so excited we're here. Stephen, you and I have been talking about this. I would look back through our emails. It was last summer that wow. we started talking about really getting together. And I know I reached out to you over a year ago just to say I am just such a big supporter of what you do and, and full-time FBA and the spirit in which you do it, um, which really aligns with us uh, at Inventory Lab. And I just was looking for any opportunity to kind of uh, support you and collaborate with you. So I'm really excited. We're finally here. Uh, but my name is Kimberly McCaffrey. I guess I should <laughs> introduce myself. I'm the Customer Learning and Development Coordinator uh, of Inventory Lab. And my colleague Jeff is here. Hi. Hey, everybody. I'm uh, Jeff, one of the uh, customer champions, and also very happy to be here. Been a fan of Stevens for a while and love what he does with the group. So excited to be here and uh, tell you all about Inventory Lab. That's awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate both of y'all taking the time out of your your day to hang out with us and tell us about Inventory Lab. I, I love Inventory Lab. I just want to say that I cannot imagine my Amazon business being run without Inventory Lab. It's like the number one thing on my list of things that I need to run a successful business. I need Inventory Lab. I love using the app Scatify when I'm outsourcing. I love using Inventory Lab for listing and uh, profit and loss and category and I mean oh my gosh there's just so much awesome stuff <laughs> jam-packed into inventory lab so I'm going to uh, uh, go off screen for a little bit let y'all take over and uh, we'll just tell us everything that inventory have, lab has to offer and uh, we'll, ha we'll have some fun learning some new stuff it would be our pleasure awesome. um, I'm gonna go ahead here uh, we're going to go ahead and look uh, at some slides. We're going to go through each section, and actually Jeff and I are also going to disable our webcams because you don't want to look at us. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So we are going to look at what we call the entire product life cycle because as Stephen kind of said, we support sellers really from the beginning where they're researching and sourcing inventory all the way through uh, to reports and profitability and analyzing uh, what's working for your business and what isn't. So everything in, in between as well is going to be supported. So we're talking about listing, inventory management, accounting, and we're going to look at all of it uh, and talk about the different ways that you can use all of the Inventory Lab products to support uh, your business and the, the efficiency and really the quality of your life <laughs> because sometimes that becomes something that's lacking when you're running a business. So we'll take a look at each uh, section. And we're going to start at the very beginning um, because I found an item that I want to sell, I think, because we need to be able to do our research to make that really informed decision before purchasing products. So in Inventory Lab, you have access to Scout. Scout is the web-based research tool. Very easy to use. What we really try to build into everything is an ease and an efficiency in, across the board. So what we're looking at here, uh, I've searched for um, a product by title. I could search by ASIN, UPC, ISBN, but I searched title, uh, and a ladle is what I looked for. I would scroll through this list, I would find a thing uh, that I want to research further, and I would click that Select button. Then I have all of this great information uh, available to me. I'm able to see the fees assessed by Amazon. I'm able to input my sales tax if I paid any. Maybe uh, if I'm going want to you know, estimate how much it would cost to add this item to an FBA shipment, I can plug that information in there as well. And then over to the right, some really great information. We can see at the very top uh, that there's currently 11 offers for this item on Amazon.com. We're able to see list prices. And really, I love that we pull out uh, that FBA list price. Because, of course, if we're listing FBA, we want to 
you know, priced competitively to other FBA sellers, so we're able to see that as well. We're also able to see, uh, based on this O, little O, little A, and if we look down at the key, we can see that that's currently the list price that uh, has the buy box and that the seller is likely Amazon. And then below that little key, we see all of these built-in tools. Take a little bit of a closer look at that. So in Scout, you can click on any of these. This is Book Scouter, eBay, Google, Camel, 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 Keepa, Prime Comparison, and the Amazon Restrictions tool. Clicking I love any of Camel, 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 and Keepa. Sorry to interrupt. I, I love do that too. Lecture. And we'll Sorry talk a little bit <laughs> more too. And on the 23rd, Stephen's going to join us uh, in a webinar where he's going to kind of take us on a deep dive of how to really use these. Jeff and I, we've been sellers for a while, and we're we will admit we are not. You know exactly. You don't speak fluent camel, camel, camel. Uh, and I want to know uh, more about what he's seeing when he looks at something and says, "Oh, this number has sold from that, and this is when it's going to sell again." And it's just brilliant. And I think a powerful tools when we bring them all together. And I really like that they're built in here. And I like how we built them into Scout. So if I were to click on Keepa, it would open in a new tab. So it's not going to take me out of Scout and to another website, and I got to go back. It's going to open in a new tab, all of the information already populated for me. And then we're able to enter our buy cost and then our list price, whatever appropriate for our item. And then we're able to see that net profit and that ROI percentage. So we've brought all of this information together. You know, and the fees and the expenses, really, like the shipping and the, the sales tax, doesn't look like it you know, amounts to, to much. But when we're running a business, we want to be able to bring all of this information together, get us as close as possible to the ballpark of what we can anticipate that net profit to be, making those informed decisions. So if Scout is the web-based research tool, Scoutify is your mobile research tool. We always like to tell folks here that Scoutify is available to be downloaded onto multiple mobile devices. Um, so if you have a couple of phones, put it on that. But if you have a sourcing team, your family, your friends, your business partner, whomever, they can all have Scoutify on their devices as well. We do hear from folks pretty often. Uh, it's like, well, you know, I don't want people to be able to log into my inventory lab account, which we totally understand and what, why we built in uh, the option to have two sub accounts to your inventory lab account. And you control what areas of your account somebody has access to. So, you know, your sourcing team can have access to Scoutify or Scoutify and list, have them helping you ship and, and, and pack boxes, give your accountant access to your reports and accounting, lots of different options with those sub accounts. But we're going to take a look at Scoutify here. This is what we see when we have scanned uh, Taylor Swift's album in uh, 1989. We see a lot of the same information that we saw in Scout, and this is basically uh, the same sort of setup. All of the, the list prices, we're able to see that there's currently 87 offers for the item on Amazon.com. And if we click that hamburger icon right here at the top left, we have all of those same tools built right in. Uh, we see Camel, 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 Keepa. And again, I really like how we built this because if I hit Keepa, it's not going to take me out of Scoutify. It's not going to close one app, open another. That's hard on my device. It's hard on my battery. Um, it's going to just pull up Keepa and my little Scoutify arrow is going to stay up at the top and I can navigate right back in again. I am going to draw your attention, let me go back one, to this little buy word right here because we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Because if you do find an item, you can click buy and add it to your buy list right here. Uh, and we'll talk about having that email to yourself and what you can do with that uh, relatively new to us and we're, we're excited to talk about it. And then, of course, at the top, we have history. So just like the free Amazon seller app, you can hit history uh, and see you know, what you have been scanning and reference back to that um, whenever needed. So now that we have sourced all of these great profitable products, we need to be able to list it quickly. We need to be able to list it uh, efficiently. Jeff is really uh, our, our in-house expert when it comes to listing. Jeff, do you want to talk a little bit about listing in Inventory Lab? Yeah, you bet. Hi, everybody. So uh, here we are again at our favorite ladle that we like to sell. <laughs> and uh, you can see that it's you know, similar uh, screen to Scout, except uh, one of the best features of the list process is not only are you able to list your products on Amazon, you're also able to keep track of your costs all within the same application. And because you're entering them as you list, you're increasing your efficiency. You don't have to keep separate spreadsheets or anything like that. 
So and all this information is going to flow into some reports and things that Kim's going to talk about later. So it all is interconnected. But on this particular one, for example, we're looking at the at the top section there. <clears throat> shows the good grips. That's all right. Shows the good grips ladle and uh, you know gives you the rank, the category, the size. And then if there's any prep that's needed, if Amazon gives us that information, we definitely pass that through. And then uh, after that information, if that looks like that's the item you want to list, you know, it goes into the reminders section. You can set reminders such as it used to be that people use this for uh, expiration dates, but now we have that kind of automated. So you don't have to do that, but that was one reason why people use those, but it could be, you know, for anything. Uh, and it's set the date, and on that date, your message will pop up. In your reminders, uh, and then also on this, we also uh, if you have Amazon collecting uh, sales tax for you, you can put the tax code in, so that uh, will also follow the item into Seller Central. And from uh, this section, we go to where you're actually putting in your cost of the item, how many items you're going to um, send in, the purchase date, the expiration date. You can turn that on and off in case you're not sending anything in that has an expiration date. And then, of course, you can uh, pick your supplier, and these are uh, suppliers you can add as your listing so that the next time you buy from that supplier, it's, it's all automated. You can just a uh, couple of keystrokes, and you can add it very quickly. And then um, from here, we're going to the, M the MSKU or MSKU number, and uh, we have a couple of options here so you can actually uh, input your own manually, or you can use a variable MSKU tool that we have that will give you three options. It will either let you, you know, inventory lab create it for you. You could use a preset uh, MSKU prefix, or you can set it up to use four variables. You know, examples of those variables are by cost, ASINs, conditions. People get pretty creative with their MSKUs, and so what that does is automatically creates an MSKU using those variables. And then you can just track your item basically by looking at your MSKU and gives you all that information. I'm going to jump then, in really quickly. Uh, St yeah. Stephen, you use MSKUs in a really unique way because you will you use the MSKU to track maybe a I think in a, like an employee so that you know who to if you're paying like commission. Do I remember that correctly? Um, actually, that's um, one of the ways that I use the um, supplier. supplier. That's what that is. Yes. Let me go back there really quickly. I remember because it's one of the neatest ways that I've seen somebody use a supplier profitability report. You build in different codes to your supplier to identify somebody exactly. But Jeff's totally right. Our folks, they build all kinds of codes into their MSKU. Uh, it's we kind of always try like decipher like what was that person trying to identify there. But they'll build in like an employee, right. a supplier, <laughs> a date purchase, to buy cost, all kinds of different things, um, so that they you know, for all kinds of different reasons. Um, I'm still using the, the auto-assigned uh, MSQ. I like my inventory live MSQ. Yeah, People love that new tool. They love it. Yeah, that's what I do too. We just kind of leave it simple, but we have those options for you if you want to get uh, as tricky as you want to get. And then, of course, you know, you have your conditions and condition notes, and you can have those set up to every time you select use like new. That's the condition that pops up. But we also have some common notes that you can create. So if you do a lot of books, for example, you can set it up to automatically pop up and you just check mark the box, you know, like this one, new with open package, or, you know, if it had pen marks or something like that, it's basically just checking checking the box and that'll show up in your condition notes. So we make it pretty easy. Yeah, I love that efficiency tool. Okay. It's very easy, yeah. So. Um, and, of course, after entering all this, you're going to want to print a label. But uh, this is kind of Kim's jam. She uh, she really <laughs> has a passion for her labels. I'm going to let uh, Kim take over from here. It's, I do. I, when you are listing an inventory lab compared to Seller Central, you're printing your labels as you list each item. So if you have 21, a quantity of 21 of, a, of an item, 21 labels are going to print of that. Uh, or if you just have one, just one label is going to print. But it's printing. As you list each item, it is easily uh, my favorite, favorite feature of Inventory Lab. Sometimes, Stephen, if we have a chance, I'll have to tell you about the first 
uh, list of items or first a group of items I ever listed in Seller Central and why it was such a disaster that you know mm. that that workflow you list all of your items you then you create shipments then you print your labels and then you go back and match all those labels up to those items uh, yeah. for me it ended up being a 16 hour uh, process Wow I kid That's you not crazy. It, yeah I love the feature that you can print your labels as you list the items and I, I don't think I could ever go back to, to doing it the old way ever again. I, I definitely couldn't. I so appreciate that that's part of that workflow. I mean, it just eliminated so much wasted time. I just I really uh, appreciate it so much. And of course, Inventory Lab supports the three thermal label printers that are recommended by Seller Central, uh, those being Zebra, Dymo, and Brother. So kind of thinking back to that Scoutify screen when I kind of pointed out the little word buy at the bottom left-hand corner, and then that buy list. So let's say you're out, you've, you're sourcing all this stuff, and you're adding all of these things to your buy list. As you're adding these items, you're also able to plug in uh, your buy cost, your supplier, and your purchase date. You're adding that thing to the buy list, which people could always do, and then they can email that to themselves in a .csv formatted file. Folks had all kinds of reasons to use that, um, bookkeeping purposes, maybe like copying and pasting into list, but we had a recent uh, update. We had been working on this for so long and we're so happy to rolled it out and I actually kind of shared it. I got to share the moment with Steven. We were uh, out at Prosper. It was going to be launched the next day and we were emailing back and forth about this exactly, uh, this webinar. And I said, you know, keep an eye out for something that I think is coming tomorrow. So that was a lot of fun to be able to, to share that with you. So we're going to take a look at that functionality uh, a little bit closer. So you email yourself this .csv formatted file you come into Inventory Lab, you click the New Batch button, which is a, kind of like a unique model uh, for listing. If, if you're not familiar with what a batch is, if you want more information, we'll certainly you know, circle back to that at the end. Um, but what we're gonna, we would do here is click that Select File button right here. We would find that .csv formatted file in our computer, wherever we've saved that, and we would import it. All of those listings then just brrr, all everything is populated. I love and really appreciate how we did this. You know, we really could have rolled this out quite a while ago, but like most inventory lab products, we really want it to be a strong and robust and valuable and simple to use type of tool. And here's some kind of examples of that. So when you import that list, there is a three step process. Once it's imported, the inventory lab validation uh, step is already completed. The second is the Amazon validation step. And the third is you're done. <laughs> so the inventory lab validation step, what we're looking at here, is inventory lab takes a look at what you're importing and they say, hey, um, there's a couple of things here that you need to take some action on. So maybe you had a couple of duplicates, you know, in that, that buy list. And there's going to be a little, you know, um, uh, what, I can't think of the, what word do we have on that button, Jeff? Merge. Oh my goodness, it just left my brain. But merge will appear on a button. You can click that and those duplicates are no longer duplicate. Everything is added together. Um, here, what we're seeing is Inventory Lab has recognized this is an item already in our inventory, and they're saying, like, hey, you know, do you want, is this a replenishment? And it is. You know, if it's not a different size, it's not a different color, um, it's not a different condition, it is a replenishment. So I could click Replenish. I can enter my buy cost because maybe it's different than the last time I bought it. And, of course, it's going to be a different purchase date and different supplier. I can plug all that in and then keep it moving. And down at the bottom, just make it very easy to track how many MSKUs you've brought in, how many uh, needed some action taken on them, and maybe some one or two was removed. That would be listed there. We would then go on to that Amazon validation. That's where we're going to kind of bounce everything off Amazon. They're going to kind of say, whoa, 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 that's hazmat or that's a brand restriction. And uh, so you're alerted to that as well. So you've listed all of this stuff. You're ready to go. The listing process was easy. You printed your labels. You need to get this stuff out the door. You need to be able to ship it. It needs to be simple. I'm going to actually throw this back to Jeff. We, have, we did a webinar pretty recently, kind of like a deep dive <laughs> for, on uh, shipping because there's a lot of choices, a lot of flexibility in Inventory Lab. Um, I always kind of use that example. I know, Jeff, you and I have talked about it before where you kind of create all your shipments and you're like, oh, man, I've got right. solid MSKUs going to these two places, but I've got one shipment that's got one or two MSKUs in there. And it's not really cost effective for me to send it. So we'll actually follow up. We'll get, make sure we get Stephen a link to that webinar so folks can take a look at that and get a better idea. But, Jeff, if you want to talk a little bit about the FBA shipping uh, area. Sure. So 
here's the uh, FBA shipping page after you've listed your products, decided what uh, what you want to send in, got all your costs entered, you uh, click on the review and then finally the submit and it takes you here to the shipping page. And this this is information we get from Amazon. They're telling us they want one of those to go to the CHA2 warehouse and they want two going to the FTW1. And so basically to create your shipment, you just click on one of those and once you do, it uh, highlights the Create Selected Shipment button, just like that. Everything looks good, and then you click on the button, it's going to create uh, that shipment for you. Very easy to do, creating the shipments and kind of keeping that moving. Um, and of course, now we have to be able to enter box contents. Folks are probably already aware. Uh, Amazon is now assessing a fee uh, for items in boxes uh, that are not accounted for if you have more than one box going to a single uh, warehouse. So this is also something that we added. We built it right in uh, to the workflow. We're just going to zip through this pretty quickly. I don't want to take up too much time. I want to leave enough for uh, that Q&A. But very easy to do. You're able to manually enter your box content information. You can simply click a toggle, enter it into the box, or your other option would be to scan barcodes. You can easily just click here. You're able to scan your FNSKU barcode labels your uh, or UPC uh, codes and get that stuff kind of put into boxes and get it right out the door. Very, very one easy thing, to do. One thing I would like to say about the scanning feature is if you are somebody that packs your boxes up as, you know, after you've got them all organized, you can you can scan those box or those items with your Bluetooth scanner and be over at your boxes. Just scan it, put it in the box. We have an audible tone. It gives you a correct tone if it's uh, it can read the item, and so you know you can just you can move through those items pretty fast and pack up your boxes that way. It's uh, made it very efficient, I think. Yeah, and it it has like that really nice tone, that approval tone, that like that bing, right. and then it also has like that bonk. <laughs> you know, when you right. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. belong in that box. Like, so you know immediately to get back over to the computer if you hear the bonk. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow, it yelled at me. But, you know, it alerts folks. And I'm glad that our, our uh, developers and designer knew, you know, that people aren't packing boxes in front of their computers. They're going to be somewhere else. So let's build in that audible cue so folks can hear that when they're, you know, over at their shipping station as opposed to, you know, right in front of the screen. So I just, I thought that was really great and just very intuitive. Oop. I should have been advancing through there. Look at that. We'll keep that moving. So I'm going to kind of just breeze through some of this, being able just to take a look at the screens. This is going to be the FBA uh, inventory screen. Again, we try to build in as much ease to this information as possible. You're able to see everything very easily, including, because you entered it while you were listing, your buy cost, your supplier, your date purchase, and you're going to see some of that data uh, push through here in a little bit. We need to be able to track our profit and expenses. We cannot get buried under a spreadsheet. If we're sitting down, we're plugging stuff into spreadsheets, that is not good use of our time. You have a business to run. Amazon sellers are hustlers. They do not want to plug stuff into a spreadsheet if they don't have to. So here on the accounting, under, excuse me, the accounting uh, FBA sales page. Again, very easy to look at this information. We have the sale date. And again, we've got the buy cost all plugged in, so then we're able to see at this point that profit percentage and that ROI percentage, knowing exactly how profitable that sale was. We're also going to be importing a lot of other information for you. For example, this page is the refunds page, so all of your refunds processed by Amazon are going to be coming through uh, for you automatically. All of your reimbursements, all of these things are being imported for you automatically. And unfortunately, there are other expenses that we need to account for. We want these to be tracked automatically as well. So Inventory Lab is importing for you uh, all of these fees uh, in addition to all of your sales information. So your disposal order fees, your storage fees, your Amazon, excuse me, Amazon Pro Seller subscription fees, your merchant fulfilled shipping, inbound shipping expenses, uh, all the way down to your advertising campaign or your pay-per-click fees. All of these things being imported for you and accounted for uh, automatically and still left other expenses, which is not unusual when you're running a business, um, but you need to be able to account for those as well. And Jeff, you really have a strong background in accounting, so I'm going to toss this part uh, over to you if you want to talk a little bit about our accounting features. Sure, yeah. So 
you know, like Kim said, we import your Amazon fees direct into the other expenses, but you can also add your own. So it kind of makes it one place where you can keep everything and you can go back to just one place. You don't have to have separate spreadsheets uh, or notes on pieces of paper. You know, we really want our customers to be able to track everything in one place. You don't have to do that. And it kind of streamlines the entering of uh, all of your information. So again, capturing your expenses so you can track them using to your advantage in those various reports that we offer is uh, key. So one, one key thing that we do is the mileage. I'm sure you've all experienced, you know, having that notebook in your glove box, you write down the mileage, you, you know, come time, you know, come time uh, for taxes, it's, it's kind of a nightmare to keep all those things together. So for us, you enter it in one spot, we use the IRS uh, rates and we calculate it for you. So at the end of the year, it's simply a matter of exporting the list and totaling those and you have it all in one spot. You can uh, get rid of all those separate pieces of paper and notebooks. Absolutely. And then, uh, of course, the other expenses, you can make these one-time expenses or you can make them recurring. So, for example, uh, packing tape you buy, you know, like in this example, it was purchased on the 29th. But you can also do uh, ex or, uh, subscriptions, like, for example, App Eagle. Those can recur monthly, um, and it just automatically enters that uh, expense for you. And so to do that, you basically click on the ad, and then you can add in categories, the date, the amount, you know, if it repeats or not, when it repeats, and those sorts of things. And so uh, make it pretty simple. Yeah, I was I was a huge, especially when it came to mileage. You know, I had it on like a pad of paper in my right. van, and an app I never remembered yep. to use. And, and really, it, it is so important that we bring all of this together. And even on the, here on this screen, we can see those are all of those automatically imported fees we see here in, in expenses. But like Jeff said, being able just to simply add all of those other expenses. Are you paying an accountant? Are you, you know, your insurance, your whatever weird expense you might have. We want you to plug all of that in because it is so important when we get to this part. And I really, you know, people really love listing in Inventory Lab. It's, it's really just very easy. I mean, really, labels after you're listing each item, come on. I mean, that's amazing. But when we get to this part, this is where we really see some things coming together because we need to be able to analyze everything, your business, the products that you sell, what's working. There are a lot of us that came to uh, being sellers uh, on Amazon without a background in business. That was definitely my experience. My professional background uh, was in the nonprofit sector. And I depended on e-commerce to generate the additional income that I needed for my family. But I was introduced to what was happening in the Amazon community, and I was fascinated with what was happening. I really wanted to be a part of it. I jumped right in. Um, but, you know, I had no idea if I was actually profitable. I knew money was going out. I knew money was coming in. But I had no idea where I really stood and it really it left me frustrated, um, pretty discouraged, um, pretty often actually. Um, and I really made poor decisions, inventory purchasing decisions. You know, I didn't come at my business from that position of authority and knowing where I stand. Um, and that went on for for quite some time. But Inventory Lab has built several powerful, very detailed tools that enable you to know exactly how profitable your business is. I'm telling you, knowing this information, um, this is what results in those confident business owners running robust businesses. You actually have available to you uh, the ability to see profitability from four different uh, directions. So you can view profitability by SKU, ASIN, supplier, uh, and category. This is what's allowing you uh, to see what's working for your business and what isn't. Uh, so let's take a look. We're going to look pretty quickly at a couple of profitability reports. We'll look at the P&L, and then we'll get to that uh, the Q&A, the P&L and the Q&A and all kinds, we need more acronyms. But here we have the supplier profitability report. And you know, it, it does look like basic data. It's easy to look at, it's easy to understand, but I cannot tell you how often we work with somebody that is very confident that a certain supplier is the one that's really working for their business, only then to find out that maybe it's not. You know, this might be a really great example here. You know, if we're looking at, um, let's see, here we have this supplier down here, 99% uh, ROI, not too shabby. 
and usually it's going to be the one uh, that has the most, uh, like the highest quantity of sales, where somebody feels like they're they're the most profitable. But when we really take a closer look, and we kind of look maybe up here, 175% really not too shabby. So you know we kind of look at that and evaluate what am I selling from that supplier. Um, you know nobody would ever say well dump one supplier and go to the other, but being able to analyze that really kind of allows you to, to shift some energy, some revenue over to this other supplier and see what you can do with that and, and leverage uh, that relationship. Category profitability, same thing, and usually kind of more often with this than the other. Uh, we, we have folks that are really confident that they're profitable in one um, particular category, usually toys, and they usually are during Q4. But when we look at like at a whole year, we find out maybe that there's another category. You know, maybe it's sports. It's the sports category. And being able to say, what in the world am I selling in the sports category that's doing so well? Going over then to the SKU profitability report and taking a look at that. Taking that information and, you know, kind of looking at the intersection with that supplier and going to that supplier um, to, to grow that relationship even more. Really bringing all of this information together and knowing uh, what's working and what's not. Because we need to file our tax returns. I wish we didn't have that written on that slide. I, it's like such a ho-hum. we got to file our taxes. Oh. Because really, like, this is yeah. like the best part. This is like the most awesome part. Um, because we have then the profit and loss report. And this is usually what folks want around tax time. And I understand that. I totally do. It's good for our accountants. It's good for us if we're going to do our taxes. But all roads lead to the profit and loss report. All of that information you plugged in at the beginning, your buy cost, your the the App Eagle subscription, the weird business expense, the packing tape, all your sales information, all of those fees that are automatically imported by Inventory Lab, all roads lead to the invent to the P&L report, and that's actually such a a, a big report. Uh, our designer said, well, I'm going to have to give it to you in two slides. So here we have the top half, but if I were then to look at the bottom, being able to go down to that bottom right-hand corner right here and seeing that net profit, knowing exactly where I stand exactly at this moment. I don't need to go get the pad of paper out of my van so I can take a look at my, you know, mileage. I don't need to wait for that invoice to come in from my accountant. I'm not waiting for anything. I can plug it in. I know exactly how profitable I am. This really causes us to come at running our businesses very differently when we know where we stand. We make different decisions. We make them, we make our decisions differently than we do when we're feeling tentative or uh, discouraged. So really bringing all of this information together. Of course, we have our great customer support team. I know we're kind of pushing on a little bit of time. Uh, lots of different options for you to access our team. We love when folks reach out to us, not just with problems, but if they want support, if they want guidance. And of course, talking about our subscription. It is all under one roof. You have a subscription. All of this is included in that. $49 a month is our subscription cost, or if you want to pay for a full year, that drops that down to the equivalent of $40 a month, so really a great savings, and of course, you're able to uh, take that, write that off on your taxes as well, always something to kind of keep in mind, and we always encourage folks to sign up first for that uh, free 30-day trial. We want folks to try it out. Make sure this works with your business, with your workflow, you know, just we want you to get a feel for it. Uh, before you uh, start a subscription. And I know uh, Steve, I think, already has a slide ready to go, but um, just in case it's not queued up yet, if you go to fulltimefba.com forward slash inventory lab, you can start your free 30-day uh, trial right away. Um, and um, I don't think there's an expiration on that, right? That's not going to uh, disappear tonight. Is that correct, Stephen? That's correct. That will keep working, and, and uh, I'll get that on the screen in just a minute. If, if you're done with your slideshow, I can, I'll... I up. sure am. I sure yeah. am. All right. Perfect. Let's see. We're going to do some Q&A in just a second, but there's the link right there. If you can, uh, uh, does it, is it showing it on the screen right now? I am seeing your screen, yep. yeah. Okay, yep. good. That's awesome. Okay, so before before we get into the Q and A, we've got some really good we got some really good Qs, and I know we got some really good As coming up. Um, I, I wanted to share with everybody my top five inventory lab um, options, the, the 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 top things that are, are available to do with inventory lab. And this actually took me a whole lot more time than I 
thought because it was so hard to like rate them. Like I know what my top five are, but to like rate them in order was really hard because I love them all very much. So the number one thing that I love about Inventory Lab is the fact that I'm able to print out the labels as I list. So the, the right as I list the items on Inventory Lab, the labels come out and I can just put them right on the items and it's just, it's, it's, I just love that fact. I don't have to wait and go through Amazon and get a 30 up page of stickers and print those out and then you have to go find those items. It's as I'm listing, I could just put the items right over those stickers, right over the barcodes and be done with it. So that's my number one favorite thing. The second thing is one of the newest features, which is the buy list upload. I, I like, this was like so close. I could put this as like a a tie for number one, but I went ahead and put it as number two. But the I, lo I do retail arbitrage, and I love being out and just using my Scoutify app and being able to click the buy button, click the, the price that I'm paying for it. I, I say where I'm at and the, the date, and then the rest of the time I'm at that store on that day. The you know I don't have to, I'll, all I have to do is every time I see a new item I want to add to my inventory, I just click the buy button and the price I'm paying for it. And, you know, the date and the store that I'm buying from is automatically, you know, it's still there. And so I'm able to spend, you know, five or six hours doing retail arbitrage and have this buy list. And when I'm done, I just email the, 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 the spreadsheet to my, you know, to, to my business email address. And then I can upload it to Inventory Lab super quick. And then, yeah, I love that Inventory Lab tells me, Hey, you bought five different things in five different stores that are five of the same items at five different stores. You want to merge all those together? I'm like, yes. And uh, it's awesome. So I love, love the buy list. Um, the third thing is all the different options with knowing your numbers. Um, I think that knowing your numbers is one of the main reasons uh, that leads to success. I think for the people who don't know their numbers, are the ones who quit this business and try something else that may be easier. And with Inventory Lab, it makes knowing your numbers easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I mean, it's just, it's it's awesome. Um, in fact, Marcus Limonis, he's the guy who does the TV show, uh, The Profit. Uh, he says, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And if you sell on Amazon FBA, you need to know your numbers. Um, and then the fourth thing I love, the profitability pages where I can see the profitability by supplier. Uh, by category, I can see which, you know, hey, toys isn't doing as good as I thought it was. I'm actually doing a whole lot better in shoes. Maybe I need to spend more time in, in shoes because it's a winning category for me right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to do those yeah. things. Or with my suppliers, uh, Kim alluded to this a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, I've got some people who source for me. So I'm able to, um, you know, set them up as, my, as a supplier and put their name in there and I'm able to see, you know, how much money that they're making for me so that I can know how much to pay them, you know, a, com a, a percentage commission on what they're able to find. And, uh, and if they're not doing a really good job, it's going to be easy for me to see that they're not doing good. And if they're doing great, then uh, it shows me that too. So I love that. And then the last thing is just really simple is the fact that, you know, the inventory lab gives the prep information. A lot of times it's like, oh, do I need to bubble wrap this? Do I need to poly bag this? I don't know for sure. I think maybe an inventory lab tells you it makes the guest, leaves the guesswork behind and it just saves you from getting an email from Amazon saying, hey, you were supposed to poly bag this and we poly bagged it for you and we charged you this annoying uh, excessive fee to poly bag it when you should have done it. So do a better job next time or we're going to ding your account. Well, inventory lab saves me from that. So those are my, my top five things. Um, and I just, I just absolutely love Inventory Lab. I love it. I love that list. That's awesome. That's yeah, just a great I list. I should probably make that into a blog post because that's, that's – <laughs> uh, just go back and take my recording and turn it into a blog post. So That's a great idea. I cool. think you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've got some questions here. Um, let's see. Um, Susie asks, is this – is Inventory Lab – Something for already listed items on Amazon, not creating a new listing? That's correct. So if you're doing things like bundling or if you're like uh, white label products, that sort of thing, you're going to list those originally on Amazon.com. 
So you're going to get that started there, and then you can copy and paste the ASIN and the MSKU over to Inventory Lab to list it. But the, the listings themselves, getting those pictures added, all of that's going to be done on Amazon. But if you already have inventory listed on you know, Amazon.com, which of course most folks do, when you start your free trial, we're going to import all of your existing inventory for you and 60 days worth of your accounting and sales data. <clears throat> Excuse me. So getting those buy costs, uh, some folks feel like, well, you know, it's not going to benefit me because my buy costs weren't added when I was listing. But you can get all that stuff put in very easily. Your buy costs, your supplier, your date purchase, that's then going to start populating those profitability reports so you can really get that full experience. That makes total sense. That's good. Um, Michelle says, is there a possibility to expand the Scoutify app to be able to add mileage and other expenses? I think everyone wants to do it on their phone. That's yeah. a really great question. Um, I will say that there is an amazing update coming to Scoutify in the very near future. Um, but mileage is not included in that update. Not as far as I know. Do you know anything about mileage? Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be in this update, but that's a request we've got in there, and uh, I'm pushing for that as well because that would be, I mean, you already have your phone with you. Why not be mm -hmm. able to put your mileage in right there? So, yeah, but not this definitely. update, but hopefully in, in uh, maybe in a future update soon. I can't wait for Steven to see what I can't we're going to be doing with Scoutify. I'm so excited. I can't wait yeah, to. Uh, you keep giving me all these teasing messages about, <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. You, I can't wait for you to see it. And I'm like, me too. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I can't wait. Uh, Marcia said, unfortunately, I have to leave early. Great information. Can't wait to watch the replay. So thanks for the kind words, uh, Marcia. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Marcia. Yeah. I have a few questions about is, if, is Inventory Lab only for Amazon or is it uh, expandable for eBay? That's a really great question and something that we are talking about a whole lot in Inventory yeah. Lab. You know, it's especially you know with everything that happened with brand restrictions last year there, we saw a huge migration of folks well not really migration but you know the whole eggs in one basket concept and people spreading those eggs around a little bit so there there is functionality to be able to capture your your expenses and your in, other income in inventory lab so a lot of our folks that do sell on eBay uh, or other platforms use it in that way so remember that other expenses page uh, that Jeff was talking about where you're able to you know get your your recurring app eagle subscription or something else plugged in you can also account for uh, expenses like your eBay and your your PayPal expenses there's a there is a kind of like a partner page to that called other income same exact thing you can plug in your other income as well and all of that's then going to also push through to that P&L page but we we are looking and working very diligently to uh, look at some options so that we can support everybody it, you know people are making really good business decisions by putting those eggs in other baskets as well you want multiple baskets and multiple income streams um, and we want to be able to support those those really great business decisions. That's good. That's good. Um, Sandy says, I'm on the 30-day trial. Will the rest of my items transfer over once I start paying the monthly fee? Yes. Once you become you upgrade to a, a subscription, you're able to then uh, get all of your historical data imported. You know, if you want to bring in like the last six months, or if you want to bring in the whole last year. You can, you'll be able to bring all of that information in. It's just that 30-day trial period that uh, only 60 days of accounting data comes in. Great question. Cool. Um, let's see. Val said you mentioned earlier about posting a link in to, uh, for making shipments. Don't forget to post the link to the webinar for making shipments. I'm not sure what that was. Did you say that earlier? I did. Actually, Jeff, do you have that yeah, queued up? Right we can now. put it right into chat if you'd yeah. like. Is that okay with you, Stephen? Can we plug yeah. that in? Okay. Sure. Yeah, it's plug it's a lot of information. Right and uh, a lot of our folks are, are kind of apprehensive and, and not really sure how to use all of those you know, shipping choices that they have. Um, and also, you know, it kind of gets a little bit confusing or was confusing it's not now because there's a webinar uh, for folks that listing in different workflows so in inventory lab you can list in a private workflow or a live workflow uh, the biggest difference with those two I kind of explain a private workflow as you're writing an email to Amazon you're kind of saying dear Amazon I've got 
this uh, you know quantity of this m skew and this quantity of this m skew and you look it over and you see that you spelled something wrong and you backspace over it and you change it and you look it over now you're happy and then you click send and Amazon immediately comes back and tells you okay we want you to send uh, that quantity to this fulfillment center and this to that fulfillment center compared to a live workflow it's like a live conversation as you're listing your items you know exactly what fulfillment center. You're face to face with Amazon and you say this quantity of this and it, with exactly at that moment they say we want it to go to these two fulfillment centers. The benefit to that is you're able to pack and sort while you're listing. Another great benefit. So the labels are printing, you're putting stuff in boxes, you know, it's so such a really great uh, workflow. But you know the, the flexibility is a little bit different because it is a live conversation with Amazon. So when you tell them you have 15 of something, they kind of want the 15. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, if you meant to say you had 17, you know, it's a little bit different to be able to change that compared to a private workflow where you can change and do whatever you need to do until you move forward. Uh, so, but with shipments, it's also the same thing. You have that flexibility or you don't have to create all the shipments, um, or you can create them all, but pack boxes later. Maybe you only have time to get one uh, you know, set of boxes out to go to the fulfillment center in Jersey. You have a lot of different options for that. We, we kind of cover each one in depth in that webinar. I was just going to throw in one thing. If you have box content on when you're uh, creating your batch, it makes it a lot easier to edit your quantities and stuff in Seller Central because when you mm -hmm. edit it from your box content in Inventory Lab, it will also edit it in uh, Seller Central for you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And, and for anybody who's watching the replay of this and not having access to the chat, the, the link to um, their, their webinar about listing on Inventory Lab is vimeo.com. That's V-I-M-E-O.com forward slash 201 six seven two seven five three so I'll make sure everyone has access to that they're also um, more than welcome to shoot us an email at support at inventory lab.com shoot us an email just say hey I'd like to get a link to the webinar and we'll get it right back to you not a problem great. at all y'all are awesome y'all have the best customer service I, I, I it's always a quick reply oh, thank and, you uh, yeah Thanks. um Kimberly Simpson says when we sign up for Inventory Lab, how can we import existing information up to this point, either from Seller Central or from existing profit and loss spreadsheet? That's a great question. So what you're going to do is you're going to sign up and you're going to connect your Inventory Lab account to Seller Central through the magical MWS API. So we're going to be able to import a whole lot of that stuff for you. Um, so what you're going to want to do first is start really populating that profit and losses to get your, your list prices plugged in. Um, but everything else really, all of those fees and expenses that we import for you automatically, all of that's going to be coming in as well, up, up to 60 days. So um, other expenses, you can start plugging those in, you know, going back, you know, your, your tape, your weird business you know, bills and such, uh, all of that can get plugged in too. Um, but most of that's done for you automatically. Did I understand the question correct, or Jeff, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, uh, another thing is you can import your costs. So if you get your existing inventory from Seller Central and it's in the inventory lab, it won't have your cost information, obviously, but we make it pretty easy just to import that, and that's also in the, uh, the user guide, which is connected in, under the Help tab in Inventory Lab. You can go right to the user guide, and we have the – Kim actually has done several uh, uh, videos in the tutorial video section that shows you exactly how to import all those costs. So we make it as easy as possible. Yeah, because yeah. some of our folks are coming in with thousands and thousands of MSQs in their inventory, or even just like a hundred, to put each one of those in manually. And that's just, you know, by cost. And, you know, if you want to put your purchase date in, and if you want to put your supplier in, that's a lot of stuff to manually put in. So we, we yeah. make that as, as painless as possible. Yeah, that's really good. And, you know, this is also why I suggest that people who are versed just now starting out selling on Amazon to go ahead and get started with Inventory Lab so that you can have everything, you know, every piece of information possible in there and not have to, you know, play catch up later. Because some people think, well, once I start selling a certain amount, then I'll get Inventory Lab because uh, I, I think it'll be worth it then. Mm -hmm. I really suggest getting started with Inventory Lab sooner because you're going to realize, you know, just how useful it is and, and you don't want to 
you know, try and play catch up later when you because you know if you start selling on Amazon, you're going to start selling stuff and you're going to you know get a lot of sales and uh, before you know it, you're going to oh, I wish I started earlier. I don't think anyone has ever <laughs> started Inventory Lab and thought I started too soon because it's just it's perfect. <laughs> The only downside to not starting an inventory lab first, in my opinion, is you don't get that euphoric sense of joy when you print your labels the first time in inventory lab. You don't have the, you don't have the, the terribleness that it is in Seller Central to compare it to. But um, I, I think it is a strong way to start, for sure. Um, I know that there's another school of thought that says that folks should really start off in Seller Central and kind of you know get the flow going. But I know a lot of our folks that started off from day one in Inventory Lab and started, I feel like they started strong. I don't know if you would share that opinion, Jeff, but. Um, yeah, I, definitely. Yeah. Speaking of labels, Mark asked, um, when preparing products, not all items need labels per Amazon. Does Inventory Lab take into account the sticker list option into consideration? Yeah, you can list uh, commingled and st stickerless. Uh, the only time that you would see any kind of a, not I don't want to say like a hiccup, but Amazon doesn't uh, like for commingled stickerless to be in with uh, seller labeled in mm -hmm. stuff in the same shipment. So sometimes folks are listing, you know, a mix of the two, and then they find that they have duplicate shipments going to the same warehouse. Um, but it's as easy as clicking an export button and a document that's already populated and set up for you. You don't have to touch it. In fact, we don't want you to touch it. <laughs> and then going over to Seller Central yeah. and clicking an import button. It's very easy to do as, uh, as a workaround. So you can just list everything uh, here and then click that export button, hop over to Seller Central, click import, and then you'll have everything going to the same place. Or you can send duplicate shipments to the same fulfillment center if you'd like to, but, uh, but you know, who, who wants to do that? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, let's see. Does printing labels from Inventory Lab require a thermal printer? It does. So those three, uh, the three supported ones, the Zebra, Dymo, and Brother, they are the the three label, uh, excuse me, thermal label printers. If you are still printing on a 30 up sheet, however, that's still possible. You're just going to want to do that right out of your uh, shipping queue in Seller Central. So you can continue to do that. Absolutely, you don't have to print uh, use on, on a thermal label printer if you don't want to. Right, but once you start doing it from a thermal pr print, printer, I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, it's 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 like the, you know, it's like, you know, once you go thermal, you'll never go back to, you know, printing it out on the ink. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. the, the time you save, the the amount of paper you save, the amount of ink money that you save, it's just. And the time. Uh, it pays for it, absolutely. Yeah, um, your, your time is so valuable. It is so valuable, and as you move forward in your business and you, you, realize exactly that time is money <clears throat> and you kind of yeah. start shipping some things around you know you can find those things pretty inexpensive sixty dollars I think I just saw one for like forty or something like that um, it, it, it's so worth it it really is but if you you know there are still folks that prefer the 30 up labels that's that works for their workflow that's what they want to do and they prefer to still print those out from seller central yeah, and that's another thing I love about Inventory Lab is that, you know, there's so many options, and you, you make them work both ways, you know, and it's like, hey, if you want to do it this way, this is how you do it on Inventory Lab. If you want to do it this other way, here's how it works on Inventory Lab. And like you mentioned before, your your user's guide, um, you know, I think that, that the user's guide is, is like gold. Um, if, uh, you know, it's like if you go through the user's guide, you're taking like a master course on how to use Inventory Lab, and it will... It's like one of the best decisions that you can make when, when you get Inventory Lab and use that user's guide. Um, I like how it's set up, too. There's that search box up at the top right-hand corner. Yes. I just like plug in a keyword that I'm looking for in that thing, and I can just navigate right to it as opposed to like scrolling through the, the table of contents. Lots of great mm -hmm. information, step-by-step. Step. Yeah. Yeah. Michael asks, um, can, a, can a user print out the reports? Sure. You can really from the majority of the, the screens, uh, you're able to click export. So you're able to print all of that stuff out. It's going to come out, you know, it's going to print in a, uh, or export in a, a CSV spreadsheet format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, Austin says, how can I know if an item is brand restricted or category restricted and I can't sell that item? Great question, and we love that question because we want you to be proactive about getting that yeah. <laughs> before something gets sent out. Uh, so, 
have the Amazon restrictions tool for one. So you're able to click that, that's in Scout, it's in Scoutify, it's also on the list page. That's actually gonna take you to that page in Seller Central that would tell you whether or not something's brand restricted or you're eligible. But we also, um, we kind of really work diligently to be able to communicate more often, so we're kind of bouncing things off of Amazon a lot more often than before. So sometimes while you're listing, these little you know, red errors are going to pop up, and it's an Amazon listing error letting you know that's a brand restriction or there's something else going on with that. And of course, if you're going to be importing your buy list, if, if you're doing that, remember, with your Scoutify app, that's going to go through that validation process, and Amazon's going to catch it uh, at that point as well. Yeah, it's, and if it's, you happen uh, to miss that uh, little error message, you know you can always go to the list tab, and we have them saved for you on the Amazon uh, listing errors page. So you can always refer back to that because they don't stay there forever. But if you happen to miss one, you can always refer back. Mm. We always, when we do, we do webinars pretty regularly, basically just like this, like a walkthrough webinar, and I always uh, get a batch set up ahead of time, and, and I always try to list something that I know is going to throw an error, hoping to time perfectly uh, for that little red box to pop up so our folks can see that sometimes I get it right and sometimes not so much, but but yeah, it's, the information is always there for you. You can just kind of, you know, it, we have a whole page dedicated to just the errors that Amazon <laughs> has, has uh, told you about. Oh. Uh, Doreen asked, is this a... Uh, available for Amazon for Canada.ca? Not at this time. That is something I can absolutely tell you is on our roadmap. Um, we have a lot of folks, Canada, the UK, that are just reaching out constantly saying, when is this going to be here? And if you're not going to be here, tell me, what am I supposed to do? And so we are diligently working on that. Yep. On and, the roadmap. And as you can tell, you know, a handful of times throughout this webinar, um, Kim has said, you know, we've gotten some demand for that, and that's something that we're talking about, or that's definitely in our plans for the future. And one of the things I love about Inventory Lab is that it, it doesn't just sit back and just kind of be like, hey, we're the best listing tool. We're just going to sit back, relax, and just kind of chill now. No, they keep making it better and better and better. You know, before it was like, People are like, oh, we want to be able to do box contents, and Inventory Lab responded. Other people are like, we want to upload buy list, and Inventory Lab responded. We want to see if we're restricted or not. Inventory Lab responded, and y'all keep doing a great job making it better and better. And the, the price continues to stay the same, and, and I love that. It just keeps getting better. We, we take our users, or I don't like to say user suggestions, but our customer suggestions very, very seriously. It's we Each and every one. We are constantly in communication. Our, our entire team comes together. We're looking at everything. We just had a whole team get together in Kansas City um, a handful of months ago, and the, they sat down, and they had like a powwow around all of the customer suggestions, and they prioritized and figured out how to best uh, best do that. I, when I joined the team, actually, that's one of the first things that struck me. They take those very seriously, and they act upon them uh, as, as quickly as they can. But like when we were talking about box content and, and things like that, they, we will not roll out something that is not a stellar, solid uh, addition and, and bring value to our customers. So it's, you know, we don't just kind of like roll it out kind of cheap. You know, we we, uh, we make sure it's 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 robust and, and good. Yeah, you don't want to have some introduce something new and all these errors and all these frustrated, you know, customers. And you know, I, I love the fact that you do your due diligence and. Make sure you test it internally and then test it beta with other people, and then when it's ready, it's ready. And I love that. Even if that does mean I need to wait for uh, to <laughs> use the first update. Uh, there's always, Kim, Kim, you know, you're going to have to start sending, uh, you're going to have to start sending Steven some screenshots now, I think. <laughs> that'll, that'll put him right over the edge. Steven, I'm telling you, it's going to blow your mind. You're going to be so happy. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to use it, and I can't wait to share it with everyone, too. Hey. That'll be cool. Joyce Anderson asks, is Scatify included with Inventory Lab for the $49 a month fee? Yes, ma'am. It sure is, yeah. And again, Scatify can even be during downloaded. The trial. Even during the trial on multiple mobile devices. Yeah. yeah I, I love Scatify. I, I would, I mean, don't tell the people who make the pricing decisions this, but I would pay 49 bucks a month just for Scoutify alone. And so, I mean, I love it that much. I've tried multiple other sourcing apps, 
and and they they just don't compare. I mean, like other sourcing apps that I've used, I've been able to see a Keepa graph or a Camel graph, but it's it, it the the ability to be able to to see it and move around and it being more interactive through through Scatify um, just takes the cake, and I love it. Ah, oh, thank you. I don't know you. if you can tell. I'm kind of a fan of Inventory Lab. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm obvious <laughs> or anything. <laughs> We're kind of a fan of yours, Stephen. Yeah, I'm just going to say it's mutual. It is. Well, cool. Um, Sandy Phillips says, I love it already, so it must be already using it and, and finding it. Oh, great. Um, yep. Uh, let's see. Miguel says, if you choose to not send out maybe two shipments that only have one item from a large batch, what happens to those shipments? Doesn't seem to be a way to delete specific shipments from a batch. Well, you have a couple of different options. It's it's going to depend on whether or not you had on box content or or if you were listing in a live or a private workflow. You want to really check out that webinar because it's it is either going to be as easy as just closing the batch and listing those items later. You know, no big deal whatsoever. Or creating the shipment, leaving it in a working as a working shipment to be added to later. So you can let that thing like hang out in your working shipments and then next time you come back to list items if you have items routed to that same fulfillment center inventory level automatically add those uh, to that working shipment until it is enough uh, included in that to, to be worth your time but you, so there are some just different factors whether it's a live or private workflow box content that sort of thing so you definitely want to check out um, the webinar good yeah, question definitely, definitely. Um, well, I know that um, you know it's it, we've we've been hanging out for about an hour now. I want to be able to respect everyone's time and and Kim and Jeff. I really appreciate everything that y'all have done and brought. You've answered so many questions, and we really appreciate everything that you brought to the table. I again just want to encourage everyone to check out Inventory Lab and to try try it with their 30-day free trial. Um, you know, you, once you try it, you're going to be hooked. Um, FullTimeFBA.com forward slash inventory lab is where you can get that 30 day free trial and get it started uh, today and uh, it's it's going to be awesome. Um, Kim or Jeff, is there anything else that you wanted to make sure that we uh, we, we discussed or talked about um, before we uh, before we head out? We welcome you to start that 30 day trial, but please do not hesitate to reach out to us. If you have a question, if you want to know right. how to use something better, we, we want you to use everything we have available for you to reach your business goals. That is everything that we're focused on. We really want folks to, to reach out to us. Jeff and I also, we do a pretty regular, um, we used to do it weekly. My youngest just had surgery pretty recently, and so we haven't been doing them weekly. It's been more like monthly. But we do webinars very uh, similar to this, and we open it up for Q&A because a lot of folks really want to see like a live demo uh, for their questions. We do those as well. but. Um, just reach out to us. We, we are excited to be able to support you. Jeff, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, just I'd like to expand on that a little bit. It's just, you know, we see, you know, comments every now and then in our Facebook group about, oh, I've been trying this for hours. It's not working. It's like, you know, don't put yourself through that. As soon as something's not working, you know, shoot us an email. We have pretty expensive, you know, it's not 24-7, but they're, they're pretty long support hours. And so, be uh, more than happy to help you in anything uh, that you're having difficulty with, even if it involves a screen share or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just reach out. Don't feel like you need to figure it out on your own. Let us yeah. help you. A lot of folks we, we do find, because like we said before, we support throughout the entire product life cycle. So people come in and there's a lot you can do, a whole lot you can do. Right. And, um, you know, if sometimes it can feel overwhelming or you're, you're not really sure where to start or, or how to use everything. And that's, I mean, that's what really lights us up. If somebody, you know, messages us and says, I want to be able to use more of my inventory lab account, like, <gasps> Oh, best day ever. Yeah. Let's talk about all the ways you can use Inventory Lab. Oh, yeah. My, that's my favorite question. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, and if anyone's curious about other ways, just going to the user guide and just going through all the the, the, the sections in that just will open up your world to so many different new options. And Kim's done a lot of tutorial videos. Kind of, they're short and uh, right to the point. And she does really a great job of explaining each section, so that's another option there as well. Yeah, that's cool. Um, 
I did have one more question. Someone said you mentioned something about a, an upcoming webinar for um, using Inventory Lab with uh, with Keepa and and Camel. I know uh, I love on Scatify the options to be able to use Camel, 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 and Keepa. And so yeah, we're get, uh, I'll be doing a webinar uh, with the folks at Inventory Lab. And um, in fact, I'll, I'll set up a link if you go to fulltimefba.com forward slash il webinar. Um, it's not live right now as I'm recording this, but I will make it live soon, and it will automatically forward you right to where you can register for the webinar, and if the webinar has already been completed and you're watching this in the future, hello from the past, um, <laughs> but uh, you can go to that same link, fulltimefba.com forward slash il webinar, and uh, that will take you to the replay so you can watch the replay to that. Yep, We are going to make the recording available to all beyond awesome. even just uh, current people that are out registered. So we're really excited to have that. We're, we're excited to, to have you uh, on our side of, of the things. But thank yeah. you so much for having us, Stephen. What a great time. I'm yeah, so thanks. happy we were able to finally do this. Yeah, me too. It's been a long time coming, and we'll, we'll look forward to the next time. All right, so everybody, I'm about to uh, stop the recording. But again, fulltimefba.com forward slash inventory, inventory lab. Uh, get your free trial started and just start seeing all the amazing things that Inventory Lab has to offer. You might have heard this webinar and like, oh my gosh, that's so much stuff. I don't need to do all that stuff. Even just starting with the listing process and the sourcing process through Scoutify, the, the sourcing app, just starting with that um, alone is going to revolutionize your Amazon business. And, um, and then you can just start adding all the other features as you feel comfortable to add them, and uh, it's going to be awesome. So fulltimefba.com forward slash inventory lab. Thanks again for uh, hanging out with us tonight. I will see you guys next time, and uh, God bless everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.